Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. <laughs> Greetings, brothers and sisters. We give praise to Ahaya Ashre Ahaya and our Donna Yache Meshiaka and our mother Ruaka Kwadoshi. Amen. We're here. Thank you for this time with you all. We're going to pick back up in understanding the church and how it's being built. And now we're going to touch on the stones in the building of the church. Those stones that came from the mountains, they were all tested and they were taken out and they were replaced by the stones of the plain and we're going to get understanding on what those stones are. Let's pick up in the parable 9 of Shepherd of Hermas, chapter 6 verse 3 to 6 please, so right. we can get a refresh of these stones. Of the no problem. Uh, chapter 6 verse 3. And that man inspected the building so carefully that he felt each single stone and he held a rod to his hand and struck each single stone that was built in. And when he smote, some of the stones became black as soot, others mildewed, others cracked, others broke off short, others became neither white nor black, others rough and not fitted in with other stones, and others with many spots. These were the very aspects of the stones which were found unsound for the building. So he ordered all these to be removed from the tower and to be placed by the side of the tower and other stones to be brought and put into their place. And the builders asked him from what mountain he desired stones to be brought and put into their place. And he would not have them brought from the mountains, but ordered them to be brought from a certain plain that was nigh at hand. And the plain was dug, and the stones were found there bright and square. But some of them, too, were round. And all the stones which there were anywhere in that plain were brought every one of them and were carried through the gate by the virgins. And the square stones were hewed and set in the place of those which had been removed. But the round ones were not placed in the building because they were too hard to be shaped and to work on them was slow. So they were placed by the side of the tower, as though they were intended to be shaped and placed in the building, for they were very bright. So among the stones of the tower, we have the unsound stones on the side of the tower. You have the black as soot, the mildew, the cracked, the broken off short, those that were neither black or white, the rough, and the ones with many spots. Along with those from the stones of the plain, you also have the round stones that were hard to be shaped. All these have been placed on the side of the tower. Now for understanding of these things, we could go to Shepherd of Hermas, Vision 3, chapter 5, verse 5, up to chapter 6, verse 3 of Vision 3. Chapter 5, verse 5. But those whom they rejected and threw away, who are they? These have sinned and desired to repent. Therefore, they were not cast to a great distance from the tower because they will be useful for the building. If they repent, they then that shall repent, if they repent, will be strong in the faith. If they repent now while the tower is building, but if the building shall be finished, they have no more any place, but shall be castaways. This privilege only they have that they lie near the tower. Jumping to chapter 6 verse 2. But the rest whom thou hast seen lying in great numbers, not going to the building, of these they that are mildewed are they that knew the truth, but did not abide in it, nor cleave to the saints. Therefore they are useless. But they that have cracks, who are they? These are they that have discord in their hearts against one another, and are not at peace amongst themselves, who have an appearance of peace, but when they depart from one another, their wickedness abide in their hearts. These are the cracks which the stones have. But they that are broken off short, these have believed, and have their greater part in righteousness, but have some parts of lawlessness. Therefore, they are too short and are not perfect. But the white and round stones which did not fit into the building, who are they, lady? She answered and said to me, 
How long art thou foolish and stupid? And inquirest everything, and understandest nothing. These are they that have faith, but have also riches of this world. When tribulation cometh, they deny their Lord by reason of their riches, and their business affairs. And I answered and said unto her, When then, lady, will they be useful for the building? When, she replied, their wealth which leadeth their souls astray shall be cut away, then will they be useful for al -Hayyam. For just as the round stone, unless it be cut away, and lose some portion of itself, cannot become square, so also they that are rich in this world, unless their riches be cut away, cannot become useful to the Lord. So that's an understanding of the stones for the building. We have further understanding on the stones of the plain in Shepherd of Hermas, Parable 9. We're going to read chapter 29, verse 4, all the way to chapter 31, verse 3. Okay. After he had finished the parables of the mountains, I say unto him, Sir, now explain to me concerning the stones that were taken from the plain and placed in the building in the room of the stones that were taken from the tower. And concerning the round stones which were placed in the building, concerning those that were still round. Here saith he likewise concerning all these things. The stones which were taken from the plain and placed in the building of the tower in the room of those that were rejected are the roots of this white mountain. So they see where these stones came from? They're the roots of the white mountain. When then they that believed from this mountain were all found guiltless, Ahiah of the tower ordered these from the roots of the mountain to be put into the building of the tower. For he knew that if these stones should go into the building of the tower, they would remain bright, and not one of them would turn black. But if he added stones from other mountains, he would have been obliged to visit the tower again and to purify it. You have the guileless that are like babes. He knew that once they believed, he wouldn't have to come back and visit for them. Right. So that's an exhortation for us to put on that simplicity and guilelessness and be as children. All right. Now all these have been found white, who have believed and who shall believe, for they are of the same kind. Blessed is this kind, for it is innocent. The guileless, that's the blessing we want to partake in. Here now likewise concerning those round and bright stones. All these are from the white mountain. Now here, wherefore, they have been found round. Their riches have darkened and obscured them a little from the truth. So we see that roundness was pertaining to the money. When therefore I have perceived their mind that they could favor the truth and likewise remain good, he commanded their possessions to be cut off from them. For one's salvation, I would take away one's finances. So that one can see the truth and he see their mind can be toward him, took away their riches so that they can focus on what is important. So what those who can identify with this can know that when things are taken away, know that Ahaya does all things for one's good. Yet not to be taken away altogether, so that they might be able to do some good with that which has been left to them, and might live unto Ahaya. For that they come of a good kind. So therefore, they have been cut away a little and placed in the building of this tower. Right. But the other stones, which have remained round and have not been fitted into the building, because they have not yet received the seal, have been replaced in their own possession, for they were found very round. They didn't receive the seal, didn't get baptized. Uh -huh. But this world and the vanities of their possessions must be cut off from them, and then they will fit into the kingdom of Allahim. Uh -huh. For it is necessary that they should enter into the kingdom of Allahim, because Ahia has blessed this innocent kind. Uh -huh. So you see how Ahia is so merciful in dealing with the people are innocent, yet their their finances, their trusting in their riches is detracting them from Elohim. And in his long suffering, instead of just casting them off altogether, he's taking it away from them f so that they can get to the place that he wants them to be. You see how Ahaya is the husbandman indeed. He's working, doing to each person. He knows our people what they need in order for them to attain unto him. This is interesting because everybody else says Ahaya knows the heart, right? And 
obviously the people of the 12th mountain, they had a good heart, but it said that the riches took them away from Mount Hyam. Right. So just because you have a good heart doesn't mean that you, you're worshiping correctly. Right. You're worshiping the right Mount Hyam. Right. Yeah, that's literally what they're showing in the mountain. It had a good heart, but going the wrong direction. Right. Mount uh, Hyam indeed knows. So just having a good heart in that respect doesn't justify one. Right. One has to have a good heart toward Allah Hayyam right. and doing all things toward him to be justified. That's right. Because a lot of people always come with the question, um, they had a, this person had a good heart. Are they going to go to heaven? And now you know why or, or why not someone didn't go to heaven because they didn't have a good heart with Allah Hayyam, though they had a good heart with men. Right. Because the commandments of both hey, O Israel, Ahaya, Awala Hayam is one, and thou shalt love Ahaya, Awala Hayam, with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. Right. And the second is you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Right. So you can't do one without the other. Right. Uh, let's see. For it is necessary that they should enter into the kingdom of Allah Hayam, because Ahaya hath blessed innocent kind. Of this kind, then, not one shall perish. Yea, even though any one of them being tempted by the most wicked devil have committed any fault. So you see, they made a mistake, but they were in godlessness and simplicity. So they would confess their faults just as little children and move forward. Going toward the mark, they were perfect, aren't they? Because children forget what they do as soon as it's over. Right. And they move forward. Right. Right? He shall return speedily unto with the donor. That's bringing fruit already of repentance. Oh, that wasn't right. Uh, you tell you speak with your brother like man I messed up here and then it's not get it out pray and go forward right. and strive against the enemy that's why he said the devil would not be able to get these ones because that simplicity keeps you from the devil right. right to put it a little more on it like something happened the devil will tempt you to justify oneself the mind games of well was it really wrong do I need to say something well, it's the, this and this happened before. The devil play any game to get one to stay right where one is. Like, this person did this to me, so I, I was right for doing that. Right, and even guilt tripping, man. I'm always messing up. Well, I'm never gonna get it right, so on and so forth. And guilt tripping. When Ahaya upbraideth not, James said it. Ahaya doesn't upbraid, so you can know that's the enemy with those thoughts trying to keep one down. Right. Ahaya wants us all to live. He has no pleasure in the death of him that died. To go into it a little more to understand how we can be guileless and simplistic and move forward and strive toward Allah. Bless I pronounce you all to be. I, the angel of repentance, whoever of you are guileless as infants, because your part is good and honorable in the sight of Allah. Angel of repentance said it. I think that says enough. So that's the stones. And now we have understanding on the types of people that these stones are as we continue reading about the building of the church. Can we pick up in parable 9, chapter 7, verse 1, please? So then, having accomplished these things, the glorious man who was Adorno of the whole tower called the shepherd to him. And delivered unto him all the stones which lay by the side of the tower, which were cast out from the building, and saith unto him, Cleanse these stones carefully, and set them in the building of the tower, these, I mean, which can fit with the rest, but those which were not fit, though far away from the tower. So we see they were all given to the angel of repentance. This is why the gospel is of repentance. John came preaching repentance. Right. Here we are in the end of the world talking about repentance because this is the key to get cleansed to be a part of the tower. Having given these orders to the shepherd, he departed from the tower with all those with whom he had came. And the virgin stood around the tower watching it. And I say to the shepherd, how can these stones go again to the building of the tower, seeing that they have been disapproved? He said unto me in answer, Seest thou, saith he, these stones? I see them, sir, say I. I myself, saith he, will shake the greater part of these stones and put them into the building, and they shall fit in with the remaining stones. You see, these stones are the ones that are going through repentance. That's right. 
How sir, say I, can they, when they are chiseled, fill the same space? He saith unto me in answer, As many as shall be found small shall be put into the middle of the building, but as many as are larger shall be placed near the outside, and they will bind them together. Well, that shows the mercy of Allah to find a place for them to fit one way or another right. because they've gone through the repentance. With these words he saith to me, Let us go away, and after two days let us come and clean these stones and put them into the building. For all things round the tower must be made clean. Least happily the master comes suddenly and find the circuit of the tower dirty, and he be wroth. And so these stones shall not go to the building of the tower, and I shall appear to be careless in my master's sight. And after two days we came to the tower, and he saith unto me, Let us inspect all the stones, and see those which can go to the building. I say to him, Sir, let us inspect them. And so commencing, first we began to inspect the black stones. And just as they were when set aside from the building, such also they were found. And the shepherd ordered them to be removed from the tower and to be put on one side. So there was no change in these people. Right. Then he inspected those that were mildewed, and he took and shaped many of them, and ordered the virgins to take them up and put them into the building. And the virgins took them and placed them in the building of the tower in a middle position. But the rest he ordered to be placed with the black ones, for these also were found black. Then he began to inspect those that had the cracks. And of these he shaped many, and he ordered them to be carried away by the hands of the virgins for the building. And they were placed toward the outside, because they were found to be sounder. But the rest could not be shaped owing to the number of the cracks. For this reason, therefore, they were cast aside from the building of the tower. Then he proceeded to inspect the stunted stones, and many among them were found black, and some had contracted great cracks. And he ordered these also to be placed with those that had been cast aside. But those of them which remained, he cleaned and shaped, and ordered to be placed in the building. So the virgins took them up and fitted them into the middle of the building of the tower, for they were somewhat weak. Then he began to inspect those that were half white and half black, and many of them were now found black. And he ordered these also to be taken up with those that had been cast aside. But all the rest were found white and were taken up by the virgins. For being white, they were fitted by the virgins themselves into the building. But they were placed toward the outside because they were found sound, so that they could hold together those that were placed in the middle. For not a single one of them was too short. You see how the strong bear the infirmities of the weak. Right. And it's interesting how this parable that Hermas is seeing is describing repentance. It's describing the gospel in itself. Right. How the strong on the outside to bear up, weaker ones on the inside, them going through the chiseling it's process. Are uh, you being purged and all the iniquities being, being circumcised? Yes. And it's essential to see this process that we're going through is what we need to enter into the kingdom. Then he began to inspect the hard and rough, and a few of them were cast away because they could not be shaped, for they were found very hard. But the rest of them were shaped and taken up by the virgins and fitted into the middle of the building of the tower, for they were somewhat weak. Then he proceeded to inspect those that had the spots, and of these some few had turned black, and were cast away among the rest. But the remainder were found bright and sound, and these were fitted by the virgins into the building. But they were placed toward the outside, owing to their strength. Then I came to inspect the white and round stones, and he saith unto me, What shall we do with these stones? How do I know, sir? <laughs> Say I. And he saith to me, Perceive thou nothing concerning them? I, sir, say I, do not possess this art, Neither am I a mason, nor can I understand. Seest thou not, saith he, that they are very round? And if I wish to make them square, very much must needs to be chiseled off from them. Yet some of them must of necessity be placed into the building. 
If then third, say I, it must needs be so, why distress thyself? And why not choose out for the building those thou willest and fit them into it? And he chose out from them the large and the bright ones and shaped them. And the virgins took them up and fitted them into the outer parts of the buildings. But the rest, which remained over, were taken up and put aside into the plain whence they were brought. They were not, however, cast away, because, saith he, there remained still a little of the tower to be builded. So there's an opportunity for them to repent while the tower is still building. Right. And the master of the tower is exceedingly anxious that these stones be fitted into the building. But they are very bright. But they want to see us do well. Right. The scripture in, uh, I think it's Luke tells us how the angels rejoice when one is converted. Right. So twelve women were called in beautiful form, clad in black, girded about and having the shoulders bare. So we see the difference where the virgins were seemly, dressed righteously, and now we have these women clad in black. With their hair hanging loose, and these women, me thought, had a savage look. Because that's unrighteous. All right. And the shepherd ordered them to take up the stones which had been cast away from the building and to carry them off to the same mountains from which they had been brought. So you see how the women in black, those evil spirits, takes us right back to where we came from, takes us back to the world. And they took them up joyfully and carried away all the stones and put them in a place whence they had been taken. So you see how the evil spirits rejoice to see us taken back to the world. Right. Whereas the Adonah of the whole tower was anxious to see those that had good hearts, but their riches was taking them away from him to reach their perfection, to be put into the tower. Right. And after all the stones had been taken up and not a single stone still lay round the tower, the shepherd said unto me, let us go round the tower and see that there is no defect in it. And I proceeded to go round it with him. And when the shepherd saw that the tower was very comely in the building, he was exceedingly glad, for the tower was so well builded that when I saw it, I coveted the building of it, for it was builded as if it were of one stone, having one fitted in it. And the stonework appeared as if hewn out of the rock, for it seemed to me to be all a single stone. We know the rock is Yache. Right, it looks exactly the same as it's coming from the rock. It looks like the rock is just flowing up together. Right, showing we have to become like him. If we do not become like him, we shall not enter in. And because we the shall not be fitted for the building. Right, because it was seamless. Right. There was no corruption in it. As if it was hewn from one stone. Straight. But no servant greater than his master. We have to be as he is. All right. Well, this is our joy. Happy are you <laughs> when you know these things to do them. <laughs> and I, as I walked with him, was glad to see so brave a sight. And the shepherd said to me, Go and bring plaster and fine clay, that I may fill up the shapes of the stones that have been taken up and put into the building. For all the circuit of the tower must be made smooth. And I did as he bade, and brought them to him. Assist me, saith he, and the work will speedily be accomplished. So he filled in the shapes of the stones which had gone to the building, and ordered the circuit of the tower to be swept and made clean. And the virgins took brooms and swept, and they removed all the rubbish from the tower, and sprinkled water. And the sight of the tower was made cheerful and very seemly. The shepherd saith unto me, all, saith he, hath now been cleaned. If a higher come to inspect the tower, he hath nothing for which to blame us. Saying this, he desired to go away. But I caught hold of his wallet and began to adjure him by a higher that he would explain to me all what he had showed me. <laughs> He's like, where you going? I want right. to understand what you just showed, showed me. me. <laughs> but I understand. <laughs> right. He said unto me, I am busy for a little while, and then I will explain everything to thee. Await me here till I come. So we're going to pause right there, and we're going to come back at another time. And get understanding of the explanation of these things. We'll get back to you all. All right. I have you magnified. Chabata chala. Chabata chala.